my name in the history books. You know, I ain't worried about being a, a, a Hall of Famer because I will be that, that's for sure. That I'm still alive and people can love me. Like, that was the baddest man in the world, he did it. I've always been real strong. I've always been stronger than what I've looked. Deontay Wilder. I'm not a nice guy when it's time to fight. I want to destroy. And if you're the person in front of me, then it's got to be between me and you. People just don't understand where I come from. You know, I done had to work my ass off to get here. I done had to sacrifice so many years. I know what I possess. I know what I can do. And that's not guys out. When the saying is don't read a good book by its cover, that's definitely me. You know, when when you look at me, you don't I don't look like a uh the average heavyweight built with muscles or or just just my frame, you know. Um I got an athletic frame. Even when I was coming up sports, I've always was I always was one of the strongest. I've always was one of the fastest, the one of the athletic guys. I'm from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. This is a college town, you know, definitely with football. And um, that was my ultimate goal to be football or basketball player. Oh yes, I definitely remember uh, on the football field and on the basketball court and, and in the hallways of the school. I mean, he's real mild man inside the building. But when it came to football and basketball, you know, he held nothing back the same way he do in the ring. He was still into sports. He was playing like basketball and football, but not in his early career, he wasn't planning on being a boxer. We may have a plan for ourselves, but God have sometimes have other plans for us. And uh, for me, he had another plan for me, you know, and uh, it, it, it didn't retain nothing with a ball. I saw him one, running one day outside the fence, and I stopped, and I said, man, why don't you come up here and play? He said, no, nah, coach, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be the heavyweight champ of the world one day. The first person I ever knocked out in life was uh, his name. <laughs> I don't even know if I want to give his name. His name, first name, Rashad, I'll say that. Right under the oak tree after school in the kindergarten. That was my first fight ever, you know, and I still remember that. I still have the oak tree up to this day, you know, and um, I'll never forget that ever. You know, that was the first fight ever in my life before someone else outside of my brothers and sisters. <laughs> I have always been there with the power and stuff. I, I That's why I, I never was concerned about if guys outweighed me or not. Like, that's just, you just you just look the part. Now, we're going to find out in a minute where your heart is, and we're going to see if you re actually that part. Because there's a difference between looking and actually being, you know? And um, people would find out very quickly that I was every bit of what I said. It's beautiful. Yeah, it make you want to get on the waters. That's true. Hey, what's going on, man? How you doing, yeah, man? Yeah, good. good to see you. Yeah, yeah. Kind of I, know you yeah, yeah, I know you. How you doing? Yeah, okay. I'm doing good. How you been? Good. Dionte, what's the plan for today? What are you doing? Get everything going. The blood flowing. Ready? Get! Push, 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 boy. There you go. There you go. Be smooth with it. Get! Good job. Boom. There you go. Good job, champ. At this point in time, we know we'd have been doing it for so long. I mean, I'm 40 fights in. I done had 40 training camps. <laughs> so if I don't know what I'm doing right now, then, then I, I'll never be able to succeed uh, to the next levels. There you go. Jab! Jab! Get! Come on, come on, come on. All the way, 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 all the way. Good job, one more, baby. Deontay was only about six months into boxing when I met him, six months. So when we say that, uh, when he tell guys, you know, I was there from the beginning, I was really there from the beginning. I remember it was just me and him in the, in the, in the locker room. And there go this six, seven guy, six, seven, you know, he was about this big around that time. No facial hair, <laughs> you know, uh, really no hair on his head. I remember those days when nobody really knew who he was and nobody really believed in him. Um, you know, I was there because I've always believed in him. There you go. There you go. Let your knee come to you. You stay tall. That's it, baby. Good job.
Who was the first fighter you were a fan of? First fight I was a fan of was definitely Ali. You know, Ali was like he is now and still is an icon, you know. May God have mercy on his soul and may he rest in peace. When I got into boxing, I wanted to be the best. I just loved his personality, everything he did, you know, not only what he did inside of the ring, but what he did on the outside of the ring, what he stood for, what he represent. He would predict what he would do to guys in the ring and actually go in there and do it. You know, I done predict many times that I was gonna knock a guy out and how, they, how I would knock them out and um, follow through to come to pass. So, you know, and then on the outside of the ring, he was a people's person. Everyone loved him. Everyone would walk up to him. He would entertain. He would talk to people. And um, I, f I feel I have that same trait in me as well, too. Like, I can talk to anybody, any stranger. I give people opportunities to express themselves. You just never know what someone has to say or what you can say to them to motivate them or make them happy or brighten up their day. You know, so that's why I do a lot of things that I do. I love being a fighter. I love having the lifestyle that I have, being so free. We're free. This is what boxing brings. And you were never going to be free serving pancakes or driving trucks? Exactly. What were your thoughts during those? You were just trying to make ends meet, or were you thinking that possibly that was going to be your career? Now, when I'm working for someone else, I can't make a career out of that. Working those other jobs, I had to. Of course, it made ends meet. You know, I had to do things that I didn't want to do. I've been sacrificing for a very long time for my family, for my children, you know. But I can't sit around here and say, well, you know, I'm just going to wait on boxing, you know, until I make the money. The, the kids got to eat. The bills got to be paid. I first met him when he started working here for me, probably three years before his first fight in the Olympics. He had no muscles. He was, he was thin and slim. Well, he was a waiter when he worked here, and he, took, he did customer service, he took the orders, and he primarily did that on our overnight shift. I've known him for years. Uh, I actually have a picture with him and I together, because he comes in here, he still lives in Tuscaloosa, so he frequents here quite often when he's in town. I've always been the type of person that felt like I was supposed to be a boss. I was supposed to be working for myself. I was supposed to, I've always had that feeling, you know, Sometimes you get, you know, many people, I, I, I know many people to this day that haven't made it yet, but they're well on their way and what they're doing. And they had the same feeling. They feel like they don't, you know, you get that. It's a, it's a certain feeling you get like you don't enjoy nothing that you're doing because you're working for someone else. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't like freedom. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to buy by someone else's room. You putting money in someone else's pocket when you can put in your own, like, I've always felt that way. I always feel like I should be my own boss. It's a lot of things we do in life that, that we don't want to do, but we have to until we get to a certain point in our life and say, you know what, <laughs> I can live my life. You know, many years I worked for other people. Many years I put a lot of money in other people's pockets, you know, not because I wanted to, but because I had to. I had no choice. It's all started from a love of a father trying to support his ill child, you know? I only got into boxing because of my, my daughter that was born with spina bifida. She came from a lone place. She came, yeah, she came uh, very far, you know, from, from what doctors said that she would maybe never be able to do, like walk or, or have a natural childhood ability or learning. But she's amazing. She's doing, she, oh man, I'm so proud of my daughter. It allows me to continue to be strong in, in boxing, you know. <laughs> it's like we feed off each other's strengths. She's very smart. She's running around. She's doing whatever. She's just becoming a 13-year-old. Th She's becoming a teenager. She's like, she like her own space. She like to do what she like to do, you know. And, um, you know, I'm just very proud of her. Push, 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 push. There you go. Get back in. There you go. Now they're my motivations to everything. That's why I say no man in the square ring is gonna be able to beat me because I wear my, I bring my children with me. You know, <laughs> they're stuck in my heart. I've already promised them that and I gotta keep my promise. It ain't nothing personal for no fighter in the industry. I want everyone to make money. I want everyone to be successful and have a great life. But when it comes to me, I bring something different. You're not just fighting me, you know, you fight me plus my children.
this is a private school and my kids go here at the private school so sometimes I'll they uh sneak in on me or whatever they allow the teachers to sneak in you know I love this school um that teaches my kids life it's a very Christian private Christian school very quiet and we like the nature we can go anywhere we got a lot of places that we can train around here easy but we choose to come here first it was Naya my oldest now I have six really my fiance have one so that makes seven in all I want one more to make a I want I want eight in all I want a, I want a full basketball team with three subs <laughs> recently my seven-year-old told her teacher that she wished I can just be a dad and not be who everybody else you know be this big person that everybody else look at me as she always say because he can't never go nowhere people are always stopping and talking to him and stuff like that and then my three-year-old came behind her and said yeah uh we just want we just love him as a father <laughs> they're very aware of what's going on and what i do you know they know i knock people out and uh they love to see that but they never want to see daddy get knocked out and for me knowing that it allows me to stay strong it's allowed me to have a strong mindset in the in the ring none of my kids will want to see me do what i do to other guys so i make sure that don't happen so when your daughters start to date, what happens then? Do you have to interview the, the guys? My tradition is going to be every guy my daughter meets, they're going to have to spar me. They're going to have to at least give me three <laughs> rounds. Three rounds or less. What, what if they don't me. survive? If they don't survive, they can't date my daughter <laughs> because they're going to tell me how tough they are. You know, I'm going to need someone that's going to be able to protect my daughter, that's going to be there, that's going to have heart, that's going to be brave, that's going to have courage. I don't want my daughter with a weak man because my mindset is too strong. I'm a king. So with that being said, I want to create, I want to be able to pass the torch down to somebody that's going to be able to be able to, to take care of my, my, my little queen. What age is that going to be? When can they first start dating? 18. <laughs> Let's, get <this> <laughs> Let's get this last one here, bro. Cool. You going this way Maybe out? 18. <laughs> Deontay's always had power. There's no question about that. Um, the first time I had Deontay sparring, uh, he was sparring a, a heavyweight. Deontay caught him with a right hand and knock the heavyweight down. And he, and he gets up and he smiles at me and he says, whatever you do, keep him. Once I got into my 15 fight and I was knocking guys out, I started saying, like, damn, I'm knocking everyone out. And then I started like, man, I must have some, you know, I must got some here. When I came along, I was new to amateur boxing. I didn't know much about amateur boxing. I didn't even know amateur boxing existed, you know, when I came along. But when I did come along, I was very uh, observant and uh, very attentive of a lot of things that was going on. As soon as I saw him, I thought, you know, wow, that, that's an athletic looking guy. You know, and I also kind of thought, you know, the basketball court is down the street. So, uh, uh, you know, that was kind of the beginning of it right there was just, just to, to look at him and see he was athletic. That's it. That's it. Change your height up, D. I showed him a couple of things with his feet, got him into a proper stance. There you go. And um, he worked just a little bit like that. And then I did what I normally do. I, I get him situated and I walk away. And 99 times out of 100 when you do that, they don't do it as diligently as they did when you were right there next to him. But Deontay was the exception. Uh, when I look back, he was really trying to do what I had taught him the right way. And I, that was the first kind of, hmm, you know, wow, maybe, maybe we, we have somebody here that, that, that wants to do something the right way. Good. We understand each other, you know. It's like Jay said, when I came in, he was my coach because I knew nothing about boxing. He had, you know, he had to give me instructions and put me through different courses and obstacles. And whether he was looking or not, he knew that I was, I, you know, I was here for a reason. I was here for a purpose. Deontay's always had power. There's no question about that. Um, the first time I had Deontay sparring, uh, he was sparring a, a heavyweight. It was like a good, solid journeyman heavyweight who had been around the world and had probably 20 to 25 professional fights. And, uh, and Deontay was just all arms and legs and, and hard and punch. You know, he didn't have that much in the way, the technique, he hadn't had a lot of time to work on it. But Deontay caught him with a right hand and knocked the heavyweight down. And the heavyweight was on the ground and he got a big smile on his face. The heavyweight on the ground did. And he, and he gets up and he smiles at me and he says, whatever you do, keep him. 
We got Matilda Klitschko, a.k.a. Spuka. <laughs> we got, we got... Joseph Parker. <laughs> Joseph Parker. Hey, hey, then we got Dylan White right here. We got Dylan White right here. You know what I'm saying? Man, when he was coming in the gym, he was sparring with professionals, and he was, like, hitting those guys, and they was going out, and I was like, this guy can be scary. Yeah. There were several guys that he did knock down, and I have made several trips to the emergency room. I actually suffered a uh, fractured thumb. Had a fractured line all the way to here. I mean, it was painful, but you know, it, it comes with the territory. The other guys, you know, hernias and uh, shoulder dislocations, and it's crazy, man, but his power is real. What's it like taking his shots on the mitts? Uh, it's sore. I mean, it's, I, get, I get sore a lot in my shoulders. I get my shoulders knocked out every now and then, but, um, but I've learned how to do it even better, so now it doesn't, it doesn't happen too much. It's a blessing and a curse at the same time. That's why it's hard for him to hold back. For the simple fact, it's in his nature. It's natural for him. It's in his bio makeup to be powerful. He was born with that gift. There you go. Pick that foot up when you go. Hit! Pick it up. Pop, pop, pop. Now it's on his team to help him manage that power. We conduct ourselves as a team. We act as a team. You know, uh, I'm a very strong individual as the leader of the team. So I don't have to have high maintenance. I don't have to have special requirements. I'm a true warrior. I'm a true king. So when it's time to go on the battlefield, I don't need much but my men with me. And when they come with me, I know they're full armored and ready to go. At any given time, we're ready to go to war. You know, and that's just our mentality. When, all, when the war is over, we can come back, we can relax, we can hug on the babies and kiss the women. But when it's time to fight, it's full throttle, baby. Deontay, after the Olympics in 2008, you'd been criticized even though you won bronze. Some people said that you were wild and you weren't gonna achieve in the pros. How much of that was an incentive to drive you? I mean, really all of it, you know. Um, I come from a, a place where I've always heard different things. I've always heard what I can't do. I've always heard what I don't need to be doing. I need to be doing this instead of that. You know, all the negativity I've, I've, I've been brought up and raised, you know, throughout society hearing different things that I'm not gonna achieve. So, you know, it's a big booster for me because I love prove people wrong. My expectations was definitely uh, winning the gold medal. Um, that's what we train hard for, to win the gold medal. Sometimes things happen in life where, you know, you may want things to happen in a certain way, but you know, God have other plans. And then in the Olympics, I learned real quick that my fate then lies upon me. It then lies on what I did in the ring. It lies upon another man clicking a button. I never understood that, okay, if I'm red and he's blue, and I hit, I hit blue, but you give blue my points, and it's, it's almost at the end of the round, how do you correct that? I've seen many guys lose to that same mistakes, mistakes. He was the only Olympic medalist on, on, on the whole Boston team, so that says a lot. People don't like America a lot because they say we're cocky, we're arrogant, we don't know what it is to work hard, and so on and so forth. So it plays a lot in the Olympics as well, too. Four years you can train, and then those four years can go in vain because it's not up to you at the end of the day. Please welcome the 2008 U.S. Olympic bronze medalist, Deontay Wilder. Once I got into my fifth team fight, and I was knocking guys out, I started saying, like, dang, I'm unlocking everyone out. And then I started like, man, I must have some, you know, I must got some here. And then it just started being an even more confidence booster for me because I'm continuously, consistently knocking these guys out over and over and over again. So when you're just like that, it's like, this ain't nothing fake. This is no fluke. This is nothing, <laughs> no blood. This is actually real. The new WBC heavyweight champion of the world. Deontay Who doubt me now? Who doubt me now?
I know what I possess. I know what I can do. And that's not guys out. People say that you're this wild guy. They said the same about Marciano. He didn't have a whole load of technique. Is that something that bothers you when people say that? I mean, it don't bother me at all. Maybe they're not happy in the life, in, in their life, you know. Don't dwell on my life and, and, and come in and bring the negative energy, you know, and spill your negative, negative beans all over the place. You know, pick this up and take it back with you, you know. I don't care about what people say. Like I'm, like I said, it falls on deaf ears with me. But I am gonna prove you wrong, though. You know, and that's what I do. Who can't box? Who can't box? Who can't go rounds? Who can't take a punch? Who got hurt? I whooped him to an end of his life. I'm still pretty. I'm still pretty. I'm a playmaker, so I'm always shining under the lights. The bigger the fight is, the better it's gonna be for me. People, for some reason, are under the impression that Deontay comes out at bell one, you know, swinging like this. And, and it's just simply not true. You don't beat Bermain Stavern, a fighter of that caliber, over 12 rounds and win the heavyweight championship of the world without throwing proper technique punches. Typically, what people are talking about is once Deontay has someone hurt, he, he will then, you know, go in and throw some punches that are unorthodox and awkward. And he's an awkward fighter anyway. I think that's what people are seeing and they're thinking, they're taking that to mean he has no technique. But if they'll listen to me long enough, I'll tell them, watch the second Stavern fight. Watch the one-two, bang, bang, that knocks Stavern down, the first knockdown. Technically fantastic. The second and third knockdowns were the more orth unorthodox. So he can do both. Finally, you've broken out. Why did it take so long? Being in America, we have so many different things going on here, you know, especially when they're dealing with sports. Every time I fight, I'm competing against another sport. You know, when I fought Louis O.T., I competed against three different sports that was going on. You know, another thing, you know, people always don't want to bring race in it, but it's very alive, it's real. When you're a black man, it's hard. But when you are outspoken, when people can't control you and string you along, people don't want to see you like that. Because they feel, they feel threatened. That's fear. And I never understood it. Because, you know, as a black man, I just want like what everybody else wants. I want to provide for my family. I want to give them the best life possible. Birthday, Mom, Lali, baby, you my idol, man. We love you. Yeah. Happy birthday, just dedicated to you. Happy birthday. They say you can't Martin dance. The King. They say you can't dance. They say I couldn't dance. They say you couldn't go to They say I couldn't go to They say I couldn't take a bus. Oh my God. I'm a positive energy person until my piece is broken. And then that when all the mayhem starts. But other than that, as you can see, I'm very peaceful. And you have your life all over your body now. Mm. Everywhere with, with the tattoos. What Man. was the first one you got? I'm very religious. So the first um, tattoo I got, some prayer hands with the rosary beads hanging from it. You know, everything I have on me means something to me. That's why I put it on my body. So I want to be a reminder. It's something that I've achieved, certain things that I love. On my back, it's got all my city. It's got me hold, in the ring holding up, you know, saying, Lord, have mercy on my enemies because I want. And this is what I display in the ring. You don't see me having mercy on no one until it's over. The only one I got left is um, on my legs. I got one tattoo right here. And uh, the rest is just clean. The back of my legs and my ass. Yeah, I'm getting my ass done too, yeah. What are you gonna get on that? I don't oh, know, oh, man. Who, I might, who are you gonna get on I that? I might get some cat claws and just put it on there and say a cat got a host in my ass or something. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just, my ass is hairy. So, you know, it <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta get something that gonna resemble grass or something that grows. <laughs> a bear. A bear, there you go. There you go. What do you think of Tyson Fury? So I like Tyson. He's very funny to me. And you know, I like I like his personality in, in, in boxing because in boxing, you know, we all have ego. You know, we're all crazy. To even just be doing and risking your life. Don't blink, don't go to the bathroom. Don't go get something to eat. The hot dog can wait. This is a fight you cannot turn your eyes away from because anything can happen at any time. Tyson Fury. The bronze bomber 
Deontay Wilder. Everything you say, sure you turn off the fight. Everything you say, everything you say, everything you say, make use of stuff. Make sure you turn. Any time of day, twice on a Sunday, you big dosser. Come on, bring it on. He needs all these men, I don't need nobody. When I look over your body, I'm not gonna have no mercy for you. I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm ready. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Come on, let off me. I can't wait, you're going up tight. What do you think of Tyson Fury? So I like Tyson, he's very funny to me. Yeah, you know, I like I like his personality in, in in boxing because in boxing, you know, we all have egos. You know, we're all crazy. You know, because we're crazy, we the one doing this. So you gotta be a little crazy in this sport to even just be doing and risking your life. What kind of fight do you anticipate? He's been in some fun fights. He's been in some dull fights. Yeah, come on, a lot of short you know fights. What, what kind of fight do you anticipate? Boring fights. <laughs> I don't, I don't recall no fight that I've seen Tyson Fury in that's been that sight. We've always seen Tyson Fury in a little slow, boring fights and stuff like that. And the only action we got out of him was his mouth. That's what he's, that's what he's good at, his mouth. Just talk, 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 talk. <laughs> you know, you get the British accent and you hear it, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, it's comprehending, but the thing, certain things you say is funny. Deontay Wilder, what's he gonna do? Follow me around the ring like this all day. He's going that way. No, he's going this way, looking for one punch. And if he can't land it, he's totally f I can't wait for the fight. At this point in time, it's, it's all about the pain that I gotta bring come December 1st. I mean, all the talking is over. This is serious business now. You can talk, but come December 1st, you gotta show some action. And that's my jungle then. There's nothing Tyson can do that can, like, get him off his game plan. It's only going to make it worse for itself when he get in the ring with him because all the talk is going to be over. And now you got to do this. And I know Deontay, the bronze bomb of wild is ready. This could be a fight that takes a little bit of time to, to catch fire. But once it does, once they find the rhythm, once they find each other uh, in that ring, uh, it's going to be very explosive. And I will tell people, you know, don't blink, don't go to the bathroom, don't go get something to eat. The hot dog can wait, you know, till after the fight. This is a fight you cannot turn your eyes away from because anything can happen at any time. In this fight, everybody has the puncher versus the boxer, right? Deontay the puncher and Fury the boxer. But I'm telling you right now, the boxer can punch and the puncher can box. So it's really, anything can happen. What's going on, man? Yeah. I've been boxing Deontay for the last probably eight, nine years. We've been boxing, so I literally watched him get better and better and better and better and better. I think right now he's peaking into his prime. And to me, that's what makes the fight even more intriguing and even dangerous for Tyson Fury because Tyson is coming off a, what, how many? Uh, two years later. Two years, and he's hopping right in with a peaking and prime Deontay Wilder. So when it comes to just being a pure puncher, he's by far the top three hardest natural punchers I've ever been in the ring with. And that's what 20 ounces on, and that's what 10 ounces on. Like, he's just a heavy hand. Everything in his life could be going wrong. Everything. If he hits you with his right hand, it's just, it's a totally different ball game. Is he the best you've faced so far? No. I don't think he's the best that I've faced so far, in my opinion. You know, um, the best fighter I've faced so far, in my opinion, is Luis Ortiz. Tyson Fury is still unknown to be found if he's going to be the best I've fought. I haven't fought him yet, so I can't make that decision off of him yet. But the Klitschko win should stand him in good stead, right? Was that not a brilliant win? It was a, it was a, it was a boring good win. When I look back on that fight, only thing that goes in my mind is what if Klitschko would have threw more punches? Because he would have changed the trajectory of the, uh, of, of the whole fight if he would have thrown punches. Tyson wanted, you know, Tyson just, but, but styles make fights. You know, Klitschko's style was more like, you know, they say robotic and, and, and still, you know how the, the European guys be there, you know, just sit there. But with a guy like Tyson Fury that's so oval and like to move and, and, and slip and stuff, like you can't, you can't be still for a robot with a fighter like that. That's why 
with me, I'm so mobile, agile, hostile. I got a heart of a lion. I am a king, you know. I can't have no guy that's just right here facing me like, you gonna get crushed. Deontay's not Klitschko. Klitschko was older and he was like very conservative. Deontay's not gonna be like that with him. He's on, he's on the mission and Tyson Fury is in his way. So, I mean, I think that he's gonna get rid of Tyson Fury and on to the next one. No matter what you do, he's not the kind of fighter like a Vladimir. He's not gonna stare at you. And you no, he take chances. Even if he's missing, he'll miss and fall on the ground. But it's all because he's trying to get you out of here. There's not one fighter that ever fought him that has got away with killing the clock, stealing crumbs, wasting time. If you do not belong in there with Deontay Wilder, you would not be in there. Yet. And it's over! Mamma mia, Deontay Wilder! Tyson Fury, he was a champion for a reason. <laughs> he's lost a lot of weight. That could be scary because you know that he's hungry for it. No point intended. You know, <laughs> he's hungry for this. But the difference is he's never faced anybody like Deontay Wilder before. Deontay brings something to boxing that very few people and human beings uh, have inside of them. You only have a small percentage of elite in the world, right? Track field, you have your, you, you, it's only one Usain Bolt. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's a small portion, percentage of elite. Deontay is not only elite on the physical attributes, he's elite mentally because he actually, actually, actually believes that he's put on this earth. He was made by God to be a champion. Every time you see Deontay Wilder in the fight, you know it's exciting. Have you seen my knockout reels? <laughs> you know? That's what I do though, you know? I give the people what they want to see, and that's knockouts. He's 40 and over, 39 knockouts. He's knocked out every man he's been in the ring with. I mean, and I'm not saying, that it's not easy to knock a grown man out. He's a grown man. He's, these guys are 6'4", 250, 250 pounds, but he's knocking these guys out. So, I mean, it's self-explanatory. Tyson Fury is going to happen to him as well. Do you rate Tyson Fury and his skill set? Skill set. Um, I don't see. I don't see a skill set on him. I, mean, I don't see. A, I don't see a skill set with him. He's very awkward. I mean, his whole thing is just moving and doing all kinds. I'm like, I don't. I don't get it. But I mean, it works for him. He probably, he'll probably tire himself out more this time. Do you anticipate you coming over and having a stadium fight in the UK at some point in the future? Almost after, most after. You know, I say I'm the heavyweight champion of the world. So with that being said, I love traveling. You know, I've been to many different countries now and within my 40th fight. So I'm no stranger to going to other countries and being able to uh, be in a uh, hostile territory um, behind enemy lines or whatever you want to call it, or getting out of my comfort zone. But one thing I promise when I go to Las Vegas is I'm knocking you the f out, boom. Boom. I've been there, done that. You know, that's what makes me so experienced in this sport. You know, a lot of guys gonna be hesitant to compete against me because I have so much experience. I've been in so many, I done fought so many styles. I have been out of my comfort zone so many times. Like, it's not a surprise. Nothing can be a surprise of me at this point in time in my career. And that's what makes me so confident. That's what makes me so powerful and so strong because of my experience in this sport. Nothing is a shocking moment for me no more, nothing. Let's have a little tickle, come on. Let me feel this power. No. You're gonna feel a scary. You're not gonna feel no power. Come on, I'm gonna show you the Come on, I'm gonna show you. The white push is hard and that you love. I'm gonna show you the Come on, you can't eat your big dosser. Who would be in the opposite corner if you fought in the UK? When that time comes, we're gonna get the best opponent for that that situation. You know, and that, that's what I can say about it. We can assume, you know, we can put a lot of names in there, but will it be that name when it's time to come? Who knows? Just know that um, I'm looking forward to coming over being able to fight over there, you know, and um, have a great time. Deontay is a world champion. He'll travel. He's traveled to Puerto Rico, Mexico, the UK.
fought Audley Harrison there. He will travel anywhere. He will lay it on the line. He's always wanted the biggest fights. And, uh, and, and, and so whatever it takes to make the biggest fights is, is, is what we want to do. That means that all roads will lead to Anthony Joshua, right? Well, you know, uh, who knows what's going to happen? You know, who knows if they're each other's next fight? Who knows how far down the road it will go? I mean, we're not zeroed in on any one person. It's, it's more about, you know, the, the, the legacy. The biggest fight right now is Tyson Fury. And without Tyson Fury, there is none of the other fights. There's nothing else really that we can look forward to. That's the fight. That's the one we've got to get. Fury, Fury, Fury. When I leave this sport, I want to have my name in the history book. You know, I ain't worried about being a, a, a Hall of Famer because I will be that, that's for sure. You know, but I want to go over and beyond that. Like I said, I come this sport. I'm going to live in I come. What happens on December 1st? December 1st, I knock Tyson Fury out. That's what happens. I don't need police or anybody coming to my house. So that, so you can own that in the US? Yeah, just for a souvenir. I don't use it for nothing. You're not allowed the, you, can you own the ammunition or not? Or is it? I mean, you can buy anything. Man. Can you? Legally? I don't know about legally, but <laughs> you can buy anything. <laughs> so do, you, do you hunt or do you go to a range? Go to a range. I mean, I'm about to build one, a whole course. I, mean, like, I got all kinds of guns. I got, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> This is custom, my 50 cal, I got another one. This is my custom one. Oh, it's heavier than I imagine. Yeah. And when you shoot it, it's crazy. Like, when I first shot it, I put it down for like a whole, like, week before putting it back up because I was, I was like, hell no, nah, it's too much power. What, the kick? Yeah, it was a, lot, a hell of a lot of power. How often did you do it? Shooting? Yeah. I used to do it all the time, like every weekend we used to. Is it therapeutic? Is yeah. it like that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure, I like cleaning. I used to clean all of them, break it down, all that stuff. Like, I got okay. bulletproof vests. Right. I, got, I got enough for an army. How about that? <laughs> I got enough for an army. You have beautiful houses, Lamborghinis and what have you on the driveway. You have everything that you want for your kids that you wanted to start it out. Have you got what you want from boxing? Not yet. You know, I'm still working at it. I'm still working. What I ultimately want from boxing is to unify the champion. Like I said, I want I want to I want to unify the division. I'm sorry. Like I said, I want to I want to see one champion, one face, one name. You know, the heavyweight division is too small to have multiples of champions in it. You know, um, so when there is one champion, then that's it's everything. It's changed it's changed the game of boxing in the heavyweight division. It changed it up at least for that time of. Whoever obtaining those belts have it at least for that moment of time through their reign, you know, because you got one person everybody looking to get to. I want this person. You ain't got to go through all these different different little things and stuff that's going on. This one guy, and um, that's my ultimate goal. And still, the undefeated WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Deontay. We have Marciano at 49 and 0, Mayweather at 50 and 0. Do you have a number in mind? I don't really have a number. I, I've said, let me get the 51, just because you know, when I look at Floyd, he's not even considered in the heavyweight division. So his numbers really don't matter what he do, you know, as far as, you know, who he beat and how many times he defended you. Because we're in two different weight divisions. Now, Marciano is more realistic to me, you know. I definitely want to do overachieve a lot of things what um, other heavyweights have done before me. That's for sure, but if I get to my goals, that's not none of my goals, but if I get to my goals and I don't reach having as many knockout as a certain person or going 49 and 0 like Marciano, like it wouldn't bother me because I've already accomplished what my heart was so desired to do and everything else is just extra. Ideally, we'd like to get to the point where we're in you know, consideration for Rocky Marciano's 49 and 0 record. I think it's within reach and I think there's enough viable challenges out there and exciting things that could be in the future that would propel us and that we could do that within maybe three to four years. And at that point, you know, we get that record, I, then I would like Deontay to get out with his health, his wealth. And I would like, you know, my goal is for Deontay Wilder at 40 years of age to be able to, on a daily basis, do whatever he wants to do.
Is it important for you that you follow in that lineage of Jack Johnson, Joe Lewis, Marciano, Ali, Larry Holmes, Mike Tyson? What does it mean to you to have your name alongside those? It means everything, you know. I always tell people I'm a walking icon now. It's still a lot of, I got to prove in this sport a little, still a lot I got to do, but that's the strong part about it, believing that you're something when others can't see. Quitting is, is one of those things that you know when you know. I can't say that when I quit, I'm going to be done, that's it, because I'll be lying. Because we all know, as a fighter, we love fighting, and if you bring that right price up, Oh yeah, we getting back in that ring, you know. Like my man Lennox, Lennox. If they bring the right price to him, you don't think Lennox getting back in that ring? But you know, when I do retire, when that time comes, hopefully, uh, you know, I'm, I'm out for good. I don't want to come back. But I've been through so many different things. That's why, you, you know, most fighters never want to see their children fight because we feel we sacrifice for them now to get them a better life. Some make it and some don't. You know, but with me, I'm one of those guys, like, I don't want to see my children play. You're going to be your own biggest critic. You don't have to worry about nobody else criticizing you. You're going to be your own biggest critic when it comes to the week of the fight. Especially when it comes to the day of the fight. Now you're going back and saying, did you do everything right? Did you do everything you know you could do? Did you shortcut yourself? Even with the weights? Did you put all you could put into it? And if you didn't, you're going to have doubts. What happens on December 1st? December 1st, I knock Tyson Fury out. That's what happens. All that talk goes out the window. I mean business what I say, and that's what I do. I'm a knockout artist. That's what I do. <laughs> you know, how many times I got to prove to people over and over and over and over. It, it's a surprise to me every time I knock guys out there. I get surprised still, too. People wouldn't even know. I'm like, wow, like I, I knocked the one. Do you, you enjoy know? it? Do you like the feeling? I enjoy it. It's, it feels powerful, you know, to see another man, especially to see the reaction of what that body does after getting punched. Although that can sound so mean. But I'm in this sport. This is me. I'm in this sport. This is what I love to do. So. You know, someone on the outside looking in, hearing me, and like, oh, he like, you know, you're not in this sport. And it's a reason why you're not in this sport. Enjoy the gladiators. Enjoy these guys putting their hearts on the line, putting their body on the line, putting their life on the line for your entertainment. But it's a wonderful sport, and I'm just glad to be the crazy guy to be able to do it. You got to understand, uh, the switch, Deontay has it, you know, uh, and... He knows how to turn the switch off, especially when, he, when he's with his kids. He's a father. He's not a fighter when he's with his kids. But when he walks down to the ring, it's another switch that clicks on, and, and that's the bronze bomber. He knows that his job is on the inside of the ring, and talking is only, you can only do that so much because at the end of the day when that bell ring, there's no talking no more. They talk with these. Outside of the ring, he's uh, Deontay Wilder. He's a funny, hilarious guy. I mean, he's a, just a good guy to be around, likes to crack jokes. Inside of the ring, he's a monster. He turned into the bronze bomb, man. You don't want to get in his way, man, because you're going to get knocked out or suffer some severe punishment. Should you beat Tyson on December the 1st? When I beat Tyson. And then should you beat Anthony Joshua? When I beat Anthony. How big are you going to be then in sports? I don't know. I mean, it's, once, I, once I beat uh, Tyson and, and Joshua, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. I just never thought about it. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Is fame a privilege or a curse? Uh, jeez. I wouldn't say it's a curse. It could be... It could be a privilege. For me, it's a privilege. But for me, it's a privilege because it's definitely because I'm so I'm so normal. You know, I'm a normal person, and I keep myself that way. I don't look at myself as someone famous or a celebrity. 
Like, I don't even like forming celebrity out of my mouth. It makes me feel some type of way. I don't want to be none of that. I don't want that. Like, I love my life. I love how peaceful it is. I love the people that's in my life so much. You know what I mean? And I'm good at life. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy at life. I done been through so much in my life. I done had to do so much in my life to get to this point where I am. Like, it's crazy. Like, it's so crazy. People just don't understand where I come from. When I leave the sport, I want to have my name in the history books. You know, I ain't worried about being a, a, a Hall of Famer because I will be that, that's for sure. You know, but I want to go over and beyond that. And like I said, I icon of this sport. I want to be a living icon that I'm still alive and people can love me and they can see me. They can, like, that was the baddest man in the world. He did it right there. He's still alive and I can express myself and I can motivate and I can inspire people still. Like, I did it. I mean, uh, you know, I went through trials and tribulations to get there. I've done it and uh, I'm off to the sunset.